Raising children who can achieve the level of success reached by Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th President of the United States, is a daunting task. Theodore, renowned as a soldier, explorer, naturalist, author, and diplomat, not only brought immense pride to the American nation, but also set an illustrious example for his six offspring to emulate. While his marriage may not have been as fulfilling as some, Theodore was blessed with six exceptionally gifted children. It is noteworthy that all six individuals gained widespread acclaim and carried forward his enduring legacy. However, the tragic fate that befell these six children left admirers utterly heartbroken, and this video will recount their poignant tale. Let us commence. Alice Roosevelt Longworth, socialite and influencer. Alice Lee Roosevelt, the eldest child of Theodore Roosevelt and his first wife, Alice Hathaway. Lee was born in 1884. Her arrival into the world was bittersweet, as her mother tragically passed away just two days after her birth. This heart-wrenching loss was compounded by the fact that the same day, Theodore Roosevelt's own mother also breathed her last breath. The simultaneous loss of both his wife and mother sent him spiraling into a deep depression, casting a shadow over the early years of Alice's life. Theodore Roosevelt, in his grief-stricken state, never addressed his daughter by her given name, Alice. Instead, he affectionately called her Baby Lee, a name that carried the memory of her late mother. It was as though he couldn't bear to utter the name that would remind him of the woman he had loved so dearly and lost so tragically. In an effort to provide the best possible care for his newborn daughter, Theodore made the difficult decision to send baby Lee to live with his sister, Anna Roosevelt Cowles. It was a heartbreaking separation, as he couldn't bear the thought of raising her alone in his state of grief. This arrangement allowed baby Lee to grow up under the loving care of her aunt, who became a surrogate mother to her during those early years. Theodore Roosevelt's life took a turn when he remarried in 1886. Baby Lee was reunited with her father after his marriage to Edith Kermit Caro, and she moved into the Roosevelt household. Her stepmother, Edith, embraced her role and took on the responsibility of raising Baby Lee alongside her own five children, forming a blended family. Together, they faced the challenges and joys that life in the Roosevelt household would bring. By 1901, Theodore Roosevelt's career had taken an extraordinary turn when he assumed the presidency of the United States after the assassination of President William McKinley. This meant that Baby Lee, now a young woman, found herself living in the White House. Her life had come full circle from the early days of loss and separation to becoming the daughter of the President of the United States, experiencing the unique challenges and privileges that came with her father's position. Alice Roosevelt, after growing up in the spotlight as the daughter of President Theodore Roosevelt, became a celebrity in her own right. Her youthful rebellion and vivacious personality made her a beloved figure in American public life during the early 20th century. Known for her beauty and a penchant for challenging societal norms, she was a trailblazer long before it became fashionable for women to do so. During her teenage years, Alice gained notoriety for her acts of rebellion, such as smoking and gambling, which were considered scandalous in her time. Her defiance of conventional expectations endeared her to the public, and she quickly became a symbol of youthful independence and nonconformity. In 1906, Alice married Congressman Nicholas Longworth of Ohio, which marked a turning point in her life. With her entry into political circles, she shifted her focus from socializing to actively participating in the political landscape of Washington, D.C. Alice Longworth was not content to be a mere political spouse. She used her influence and intellect to carve out her own role in the political world. One of Alice's notable contributions was her role as a hostess. She held salons in her home where she invited leading intellectuals, politicians, and thinkers to engage in spirited discussions on various ideas and issues of the day. Her sharp wit and incisive commentary made her a captivating presence at these gatherings, and she became renowned for her ability to hold her own in debates and conversations. Her criticisms of the New Deal politics of her cousins, Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt, were particularly pointed and gained widespread attention. 
Alice was an unwavering supporter of American isolationism, a stance that became increasingly significant as the world moved closer to the brink of war. She played a substantial role in persuading the United States to stay out of international conflicts and maintain a policy of neutrality during the early years of World War II, a position that would change dramatically after the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. Throughout her life, Alice Roosevelt Longworth was a powerful and influential figure in Washington society, earning her the nickname The Other Washington Monument. Her impact extended far beyond her role as a former first daughter and the wife of a congressman. She was a witty and formidable presence in the political arena, shaping debates and influencing policy decisions. Alice's longevity was remarkable, and she lived to be 96 years old. She passed away in 1980, leaving behind a legacy as a woman who fearlessly challenged conventions, played a vital role in shaping political discourse, and left an indelible mark on American history and society. Theodore Roosevelt Jakester, soldier and politician. Theodore Roosevelt's second child and first son with his second wife, Edith Kermit Caro, was Theodore Roosevelt Jr., affectionately known as Ted. Born in 1887, Ted was born into a family that had a deep passion for adventure, exploration, and the great outdoors. He shared many of his father's interests, particularly a love for hunting and exploring, which provided a unique bond between father and son. Growing up as the son and namesake of the president, however, came with a considerable burden for young Ted. The weight of his father's legacy and the expectations placed upon him caused him to endure frequent migraine headaches during much of his early life. The pressure to live up to the Roosevelt name and legacy was a constant presence in his formative years. Despite these challenges, Ted followed in his father's footsteps in many ways. Like his father, he pursued a higher education at Harvard University. At Harvard, he performed exceptionally well academically, proving that he possessed not only the Roosevelt spirit, but also the intellectual prowess to succeed. After his graduation from Harvard, Ted made a career move that was quite different from his father's political path. He became a partner in an investment banking firm in Philadelphia, a career choice that showcased his ability to excel in the business world. Yet, Ted's true passion lay elsewhere beyond the world of finance. His deepest desire was to serve in the military, a calling that was undoubtedly influenced by his father's own adventurous spirit and the Roosevelt family's long-standing tradition of military service. Ted was drawn to a life of duty and honor, and he yearned to make his mark on the world through his service to his country. After marrying Eleanor Butler Alexander in 1910, Ted Roosevelt embarked on a new chapter of his life marked by both family and career. The union with Eleanor resulted in four children, further expanding the Roosevelt family legacy. Their marriage provided a stable and loving foundation as Ted pursued his various endeavors. However, Ted's true test would come with the outbreak of World War I. In 1917, both Ted and his younger brother Archibald were commissioned as officers in the military. This was a momentous opportunity for Ted to fulfill his long-held ambition of serving his country in the armed forces. The couple decided to leave their children under the care of Ted's mother, as Eleanor herself took on a crucial role as a supervisor for female volunteers. During his service in the war, Ted faced the brutal realities of combat. In 1918, he was wounded when a bullet struck his knee while he was still suffering the lingering effects of a gas attack. Remarkably, it was Ted's brother-in-law, a doctor serving alongside him in the war, who played a pivotal role in saving his life, demonstrating the strength of familial bonds even in the midst of adversity. Following his military service, Ted Roosevelt transitioned into politics, carving out a successful career in public service. He served in the New York Assembly and later as the Assistant Secretary to the Navy, where his leadership and dedication to his duties earned him a reputation as a capable and driven statesman. His career continued to ascend as he took on the roles of Governor of Puerto Rico and Governor of the Philippines. 
These positions allowed him to gain valuable experience in administrative and diplomatic matters, further honing his skills as a leader. With the advent of World War II, Ted once again answered the call of duty. He re-enlisted in the military and was commissioned as a brigadier general, demonstrating his unwavering commitment to serving his country in times of conflict. It was during World War II, specifically at the D-Day invasion of Normandy in 1944, that Ted Roosevelt Jr. achieved a moment of great distinction. He displayed immense courage and leadership during the pivotal battle actions that would earn him the Medal of Honor, the highest military decoration awarded by the United States. Sadly, Ted's life was tragically cut short just a few weeks after this heroic achievement. At the age of 56, he succumbed to a heart attack. His death marked the end of a remarkable journey one that had seen him transition from a young man burdened by the weight of his family name to a decorated war hero and accomplished statesman. Kermit Roosevelt, adventurer and travel writer. Kermit Roosevelt, the third eldest child of Theodore Roosevelt and Edith Kermit Caro Roosevelt, was born in 1889 into a family that valued adventure and exploration. From a young age, Kermit displayed a keen interest in travel and a thirst for adventure, traits that would shape his life in remarkable ways. In 1909, Kermit had a unique opportunity to indulge his passion for adventure when he accompanied his father on an African safari. This expedition was not merely a father-son bonding experience. It came with a condition. Theodore Roosevelt insisted that Kermit excel in his studies at Harvard University in exchange for the chance to participate in the safari. True to his word, Kermit thrived academically and managed to graduate from Harvard in just three years, demonstrating both his dedication to his education and his commitment to fulfilling his promises. One of the most iconic and perilous adventures that Kermit undertook with his father occurred in 1913 when they embarked on an expedition to Brazil. This famously ill-fated journey aimed to discover the source of the River of Doubt, later named Rio Roosevelt, a treacherous and uncharted waterway deep within the Brazilian Amazon rainforest. The expedition would test their physical endurance and mental fortitude to the extreme, with Kermit playing a crucial role in navigating the challenging terrain, battling dangerous wildlife, and overcoming the constant threats of disease and starvation. The Roosevelt Rondon Scientific Expedition, as it came to be known, was a testament to their courage and determination. Kermit's love for adventure and his travels took him to many corners of the world. He possessed a remarkable talent for picking up new languages and becoming proficient in at least nine different languages. This linguistic ability allowed him to communicate with people from diverse cultures and gain a deeper understanding of the regions he visited. His extensive travels not only satisfied his wanderlust, but also enriched his perspective on the world. Kermit Roosevelt's adventurous spirit extended beyond his travels and explorations. He also made significant contributions to various aspects of life, including business and military service. His life was marked by both remarkable achievements and personal struggles. Following his expeditions and adventures, Kermit Roosevelt transitioned into a different domain by serving as a bank manager in Buenos Aires. This career move demonstrated his versatility and adaptability in different professional settings. However, the outbreak of World War I in 1914 prompted a change in his path. In 1916, amidst the global turmoil of the war, Kermit joined the British Army. His decision to enlist in the British forces reflected his commitment to serving the Allied cause and his desire to contribute to the war effort. His military service in the British Army was a testament to his courage and dedication, and he would go on to play a role in the conflict. When the American Expeditionary Force arrived in Europe in 1918, Kermit Roosevelt was commissioned as a captain in the U.S. Army. His service in the U.S. Army during World War I was notable not only for his dedication, but also because he was the only one of his brothers who did not suffer serious injuries during the conflict. 
His resilience in the face of war demonstrated his inner strength and determination. After the war, Kermit ventured into the business world once again, this time founding a steamship company. However, his business endeavors were severely affected by the economic hardships of the Great Depression, which swept the world in the 1930s. These challenging times, coupled with personal struggles, led Kermit into a battle with alcoholism. Despite the difficulties he faced, his family tried to support him by helping him secure a post in the U.S. Army when World War II began. However, his struggles with alcoholism persisted and took a toll on his health. As a result, he was discharged from the Army as medically unfit in 1943. Tragically, in June of that same year, Kermit Roosevelt made the devastating decision to take his own life. He did so while stationed at Fort Richardson in Alaska, marking a heartbreaking end to a life filled with adventure, achievement, and personal battles. Ethel Roosevelt Derby, nurse and community leader. Ethel Caro. Roosevelt, the youngest daughter of Theodore and Edith Roosevelt, was born in 1891. Unlike her half-sister Alice, who often made headlines for her unconventional behavior and outspoken nature, Ethel was known for her private and familial disposition. She led a life largely out of the public eye, but her contributions and commitment to her family and society were no less significant. Throughout her childhood and adolescence, Ethel took on the role of a caring and responsible older sister. She assisted in looking after her younger brothers and played a vital role in supporting her mother, Edith Roosevelt, in the administration of the White House staff during her father's presidency. Her quiet dedication and strong sense of family values were evident from a young age. In 1913, Ethel Caro Roosevelt's life took a significant turn when she married surgeon Richard Derby. The union marked the beginning of a new chapter in her life as she started her own family. Ethel and Richard went on to have four children together, fostering a loving and nurturing household. When World War I erupted in Europe in 1914, Richard Darby felt compelled to contribute to the war effort as a surgeon. Ethel, demonstrating her unwavering support and commitment to her husband, accompanied him to France. In France, she took on the role of a nurse at the American Ambulance Hospital, providing vital medical care to the wounded soldiers. Her dedication to the cause didn't stop there. She also volunteered with the Red Cross, an organization that played a pivotal role in providing humanitarian aid during the war. Ethel's service in France during World War I marked the beginning of a lifelong commitment to humanitarian work. Over the course of the next six decades, she continued to collaborate with the Red Cross, tirelessly devoting her time and energy to various causes and initiatives aimed at alleviating suffering and promoting public health. Her work with the Red Cross was a testament to her deep sense of duty and compassion for others. After her service during World War I, Ethel Derby returned to her home community of Oyster Bay, New York, where she continued to make significant contributions to her local community and the broader society. Her dedication to service, philanthropy, and advocacy remained steadfast. In her hometown, Ethel emerged as a prominent community leader. She actively supported the local Red Cross and nursing service, reflecting her ongoing commitment to healthcare and humanitarian efforts. Her nursing background and experience from her service in France were invaluable assets in these roles, where she continued to provide aid and care to those in need. Ethel was not only devoted to healthcare, but also deeply committed to her faith. She volunteered at her Episcopal church, demonstrating her strong sense of spirituality and a desire to give back to her religious community. One of the notable aspects of Ethel's life was her advocacy for social justice and civil rights. She recognized the importance of addressing racial discrimination and actively advocated for low-income housing initiatives, aiming to provide better living conditions and opportunities for marginalized communities. Following the passing of her mother, Edith Roosevelt, in 1948, Ethel took on the role of the de facto center of the Roosevelt family. She embarked on a mission to secure and preserve her family's legacy, with a particular focus on her father, Theodore Roosevelt. Her efforts were diverse and impactful. She became a trustee of the American Museum of Natural History in New York, 
an institution co-founded by her grandfather, Theodore Roosevelt Sr. Through her involvement, she played a key role in preserving and promoting the natural history legacy of her family. Ethel worked diligently to transform the Roosevelt family home in Oyster Bay into a museum, ensuring that the historic residence would serve as a lasting tribute to her family's contributions to American history and culture. In collaboration with the Audubon Society, she helped establish the Theodore Roosevelt Nature Center on Long Island. This center, dedicated to environmental education and conservation, continues to educate and inspire visitors to this day. Ethel Caro Roosevelt. Darby's legacy is one of dedication, service, and advocacy for the causes she held dear. Her commitment to her community, her family's legacy, and her unwavering support for humanitarian and civil rights initiatives left a lasting impact on society. She passed away at the age of 86 in 1977 and rests alongside her husband and parents in Oyster Bay a fitting final chapter for a remarkable life dedicated to service and preservation. Archie Roosevelt, soldier and financier, Archibald Bullock. Roosevelt, affectionately known as Archie, was born in 1894 as the second youngest son of Theodore and Edith Roosevelt. His early years were marked by the unique experience of growing up in the White House, as his father, Theodore Roosevelt, became President of the United States when Archie was just seven years old. Despite the high-profile nature of his family, Archie was known for his quiet and reserved demeanor, which contrasted with the more outgoing personalities of some of his siblings. Like his older brothers, Archie embarked on his academic journey at Harvard University. He enrolled at Harvard and successfully completed his studies, graduating in 1917. That same year, he took a significant step in his personal life by marrying Grace Lockwood. Their union marked the beginning of a new chapter for Archie as he started his own family. After graduating from Harvard, Archie initially pursued a career in the private sector, working for a carpet company. However, the outbreak of World War I in Europe presented a call to duty that he could not ignore. In response to the global conflict, Archie decided to serve his country by joining the military. Archie's military service during World War I was marked by distinction and acts of bravery. As an officer, he demonstrated exceptional leadership and courage in the face of danger. His ability to keep his composure under fire and his unwavering bravery earned him numerous commendations and citations. Among the accolades he received was France's Croix de Guerre, a prestigious military decoration awarded for acts of valor during wartime. However, Archie's time on the battlefield also came with sacrifices. During his service in World War E, he suffered significant injuries, particularly severe damage to his leg resulting from an artillery bombardment. The extent of his injuries led to a full disability discharge from the military, marking the end of his active service in the war. Following his service in World War I, Archibald Bullock Roosevelt, known as Archie, embarked on a diverse career path that spanned various industries and roles. After the war, he initially joined the Sinclair Consolidated Oil Company. However, his association with the company became strained due to the infamous Teapot Dome scandal, a political scandal involving the leasing of federal oil reserves. In light of the controversy surrounding the company, Archie distanced himself from Sinclair Consolidated Oil and sought a change in his professional direction. Archie transitioned into the finance industry, where he pursued a new and more stable career path. His business acumen and financial expertise allowed him to excel in this field, and he found success in his endeavors. With the outbreak of World War II, Archie felt a strong sense of duty to serve his country once again. He approached his cousin, President Franklin D. Roosevelt, and requested to be appointed to an officer position in the military. His request was granted, and he was commissioned as a lieutenant colonel. Archie's return to military service during World War II was marked by the same dedication and distinction that had characterized his previous military service. Once again, however, Archie faced physical challenges stemming from the same injury he had suffered during World War I. 
this remarkable circumstance made him the only American soldier to be medically discharged for the same injury in two different wars. Despite this setback, his unwavering commitment to his country and his service remained a defining aspect of his life. Following World War II and his military discharge, Archie continued to play an active role in various conservative organizations. He was particularly involved with the John Birch Society, a far-right political advocacy group known for its staunch, anti-communism stance and criticism of perceived government overreach. Archie lived a long and eventful life. Marked by his dedication to service, his resilience in the face of adversity, and his unwavering commitment to his principles and causes. He passed away in 1979 at the age of 85, leaving behind a legacy that encompassed both his military service and his advocacy for conservative values. Archie, like many of his family members, found his final resting place in Oyster Bay, where he rests alongside other members of the Roosevelt family, a lasting testament to their enduring legacy in American history. Quentin Roosevelt, Combat Pilot Quentin Roosevelt, the youngest child of Theodore and Edith Roosevelt, was born in 1897, just four years before his father assumed the presidency. Quentin's childhood at the White House was marked by a reputation for his spirited and mischievous nature, and he was well known for his wild antics alongside a group of other children, including the son of the future president, William Howard Taft. This group of young troublemakers gained notoriety as the White House Gang for their spirited and often mischievous adventures. The White House gang's escapades included engaging in rambunctious behaviors, such as shooting spitballs at presidential portraits and engaging in snowball fights with the Secret Service agents tasked with protecting the first family. Quentin's high-spirited and carefree demeanor endeared him to his siblings and peers, creating an atmosphere of youthful exuberance within the presidential residence. Despite his penchant for youthful pranks, Quentin was not without a sense of responsibility and ambition. Like his older brothers, he pursued his higher education at Harvard University. It was during his time at Harvard that Quentin Roosevelt's life took an important turn. At Harvard, Quentin crossed paths with Flora Whitney, the granddaughter of the renowned railroad tycoon Cornelius Vanderbilt. The connection between Quentin and Flora blossomed into a deep and meaningful relationship, ultimately leading to their engagement. Their engagement marked a significant event in Quentin's life, as he looked forward to a future filled with promise and commitment. However, Quentin's promising future would soon be overshadowed by the outbreak of World War I, which dramatically altered the course of his life. He made the heartfelt decision to put his personal plans on hold and answer the call to serve his country during the global conflict. Quentin Roosevelt's life took a dramatic turn when World War I erupted. Unlike his brothers, he did not complete his education at Harvard. Instead, he made the courageous decision to join the military and contribute to the war effort. His choice to enlist was a reflection of his sense of duty and commitment to serving his country. Quentin enrolled in the United States Army Air Service, embarking on a path to become a combat pilot. This role marked a departure from his family's political legacy as he aimed to make his own mark as a service member during a time of global conflict. Tragically, on July 14, 1918, during the Second Battle of the Marne, Quentin's plane encountered a D-Ray situation. He found himself surrounded by three enemy fighters, and despite his valiant efforts, his plane was shot down behind enemy lines. Quentin lost his life near a village in France, and he was just 20 years old at the time of his death. His untimely demise was a profound loss for his family, and it had a lasting impact on his father, Theodore Roosevelt. The circumstances of Quentin's death were notable for the respect shown by the Germans, who initially buried him at the crash site out of reverence for his father, Theodore Roosevelt. This act of respect demonstrated the high regard in which the Roosevelt family was held, even during wartime. In 1955, Quentin Roosevelt's remains were relocated to be alongside his brother Ted's in Normandy, France.
This move ensured that the Roosevelt brothers would rest together in a place that held deep historical significance. Quentin's sacrifice is a somber reminder of the toll that war takes on individuals and families. As of the time of this writing, he remains the only child of a U.S. president to die in combat, a distinction that underscores the gravity of his service and the profound impact of his loss on his family. Theodore Roosevelt, deeply affected by the loss of his youngest son, carried the weight of this tragedy until his own passing a few months later. The loss of Quentin Roosevelt was a poignant and heart-wrenching chapter in the Roosevelt family's history and a testament to the sacrifices made by countless individuals during times of conflict. What do you think about what happened to Theodore Roosevelt's children? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.